because I feel like that match was just for people who hadn't seen you before AEW. It was such a big match on TV, such a great main event. Where does that match rank for you in your career so far? And you know, looking back a couple weeks later, how do you feel about it? Uh, it ranks definitely number one because um, it's a lot of faith they have in me to just put me out there. Like, hey, motherfucker, it's the like, third week of TV, you know, uh, a lot of eyes on and just having the faith to put out there and see what you deliver or not, you know. So looking back on it, I definitely, like, really, you know, gave it my all in that match, so I definitely feel very, like, cool with it. And is there a level of extra pressure when you have like, the match with Cody, the match with Jericho, these big matches that like you know there's a bigger audience watching or whatever and you want to try and, as well as people who know you and are already following you, the new people, is there a different kind of pressure to that? No, man, I don't like people and I'm like I'm such like a loner that like the fact that someone's like, oh, if I don't like your match, like I don't give a fuck about your opinion and stuff. Like, and I feel like it helps me like in a weird way because like a lot of people like they check their like tweets and then there's a lot of negative stuff and it eats them alive and me, I'm just like, Dude, I don't care what you think, like, and it just, it's really, I don't give a fuck, I just kind of do my, what makes me happy, so, there's no real pressure, and it's, it's weird, I thought there would be a lot, but there isn't. Did it surprise you that it was, it was less pressure than you thought maybe going in? Yeah, 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 I was like, oh, am I supposed to feel something, and then, no, I feel fine, so. Now with uh, AEW being on TV for a little bit now, we work with Evolve a lot at home. Tell us how Evolve kind of helped get you ready for it, and what are the biggest differences you see now that you're with AEW versus your time on the indies? You work with Evolve? No, we get to work with them at home. We interview their guys for them every time they come to town. Well, I, you can tell Evolve to go fuck itself. No no question there. Do you have any uh, flack doing the uh, body bag spot, actually getting the body bag and doing that with AEW? Because I've seen you do it before, but was that any – Anything? Uh, like from the executives or any TV personnel? Did you ever get flack with that? No, not at all. Oh, cool. I just show up with a body bag like sick. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah, there's not. Yeah, no, I don't really like clear anything. I just show up like, hey, what's up? Yeah, like, oh, okay. What's up? Yeah. So. Thanks. You've talked before about how the idea that you could have gone to WWE and it, that didn't interest you for what was on offer. What was it about AEW that made you think this is the move for me? Oh, easy, like creative freedom, hands down. I've said it before, like a lot of people. If they see me at first, they'd be like, okay, he's just going to, they don't know how to, like, present me. But AEW's like, how do you want to be presented instead of how we're going to present you? So, and then it's like, give me that creative freedom and I can, I'll do whatever the hell, you know what I mean? And then with WWE, they would have, I said they probably would have made me like a, a creepy figure hanging out in a boiler room, like jacking off or something. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. I was just like, I just want to skateboard and represent, like, that culture, it's like a broader audience, you know, just let me be me in the story. So. How cool was it to um, have Chris Jericho, you were you were this close to becoming AEW champion, and all it took was his lackey to knock you off of that thing. I mean, it, I, to, I, to me, that would be like a really cool wa- uh, thing to shove back in his face. Yeah, that's why uh, t- tomorrow I will be sitting front row watching the Jericho and Cody match because I have unfinished business with both because I got that tie with Cody and I got that kind of screw job finish with Jericho. And definitely, you know, like there's – the eyes are still 100% on that championship. So. We're in an interesting place in wrestling right now in the sense that there's a new generation who – or like, you know, AEW, it's almost like their voice is being heard, but it's people who haven't watched wrestling because they didn't like what was being presented before. How do you feel about that kind of, the idea that now people are being presented with, like, I mean, it gets overused sometimes, an alternative. Oh, it's it's awesome. You know, I feel like my whole thing is I don't want to recycle wrestling back into wrestling. I come from, like, like I said, I dropped out of film school and I've just been skating my whole life. And I want to bring that world into wrestling. And it connects because of all these, like, douchebags like Jim Cornette who says like oh you know like you're killing wrestling or whatnot this like stupid skateboard fuck like I'm not wrestling for you I'm wrestling for the people that haven't seen wrestling like say like Tony Hawk or something he like retweeted the match that we had at all out um, with the fucking thumbtack skateboard spot you know it's like I'm trying to entertain the outsiders I don't care about recycling stuff in you know what I mean like just 
you talked about using the skateboard in the different spots in the matches. You tried to go for the Cracker Barrel spot when you went to go do the coffin drop. Um, now that you're having a little bit more success, hitting the coffin drop more, how do you think your, you know, your style is helping you in your matches? Because you're so different from a lot of what you see in AEW. Yeah, like I say, when I fly, it's not to look pretty, it's to hurt. I don't need three rotations, like double front flip, whatever. Yeah. Like I just need to like just fall backwards with all my like you know, just get, and you know like I said it's not to look pretty it's to hurt so I feel like that you know I I am like kind of you'd say like high flying luchador, but I bring a, a scrappy like edge to it where you know I think it definitely stands out. Two more guys. You talk about who you know who you wrestle for you and you wrestle to get other people who maybe don't watch it. So with guys like Jim Ross and Dustin Rhodes backstage, how do they kind of how does that gener generation kind of meet in the middle? Oh, it's easy. Like the, I talk to them all the time, and Jim, like, totally, like, I don't see that. He was, like, one that I was kind of surprised that he was, like, on so on board with everything. Because if you look at it, like, some just, like, skinny little skateboard guy, you know, coming out in this world of, like, giants, you know, it's like, oh, shit, it translates good, and it's crazy because they're on a board 100%. So. How does it feel to be on the cutting edge of a brand new, uh, mentality in, in wrestling it's it's awesome because um to be part of something from the start and to like from the ground floor is like it's definitely like what i wanted that's why like you know i had to go through so much hoops to get here you know and all that stuff um so like i definitely wanted to be on like in the very beginning so it, that groundbreaking what you just said it's um it's like an awesome, it's an honor to be here and have the freedom to just like, yeah, so. Hey, Dad, have you heard from any of the other prominent skateboarders in the community about how you brought attention to the skateboarding in AEW? Yeah, yeah, I've talked to lots of people. We're going to uh, Bam's house on Sunday to film, but um, yeah, I've talked a lot, like, you know, but like I said, like a lot of people, wrestlers don't get skating and a lot of skaters don't get wrestling. So I'm trying to be that bridge, but it's like definitely like working out big time. Um, yeah, the, everyone's getting hyped on it because I, you present skating so long and wrestling as a joke, you know, where the dynamic dudes just come like those fuckers can skate, or like you know, come like everyone knew that, you know, and it's making it look like a hokey like joke show, you know what I mean? So I was, I was like, you gotta like present it like for like from the real like skater, and I, that's like my job. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt. There was no skaters with any kind of wrestling back then. So yeah, that's coming true. from that now, I'm almost 40. But yeah, I feel you. Like I would have definitely been on board. Yeah, that's no, crazy. But what's been the most surreal part of being in AEW so far? Is there a part that you know you talked about the, the pressure wasn't it that you might have expected? Has there been a part so far where you're like, wow, this is actually happening? Yeah, um, and that's like in the aspect of like not living in my car anymore and just like actually like. Me and my wife, Priscilla, actually got, like, a house just last week. And it's, like, having that freedom, like, oh, oh shit. Like, it's, like, a from the financial side. And, it's, you know, like, you can do this without having to, like, you know, I don't know, like, just be miserable. Like, that's, like, the craziest thing to me is I'm, like, well, this is, like, too good to be true. Like, what the fuck? Like, where's the catch, you know? Like, you know but, no, there's – it's been relaxing and, like, cool as fuck. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thanks for the time, man. Yeah, man.